مولاي صلي وسلم دائما ابدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه وأهل بيته من التبع سنة أجمعين فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال عز وجل شانه إن الله لا يستحي أن يضرب مثل ما بعودة فما فوقها فأما الذين آمنوا فيعلمون أنه الحق من ربهم وأما الذين كفروا فيقولون ماذا أراد الله بهذا مثلا يضل به كثيرا ويهدي به كثيرا وما يضل به إلا الفاسقين صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم والآقبة للمتقين ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين وشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الله سبحانه وتعالى عز وجل شانه have given us this beautiful جمعة المبارك in this day and this time in our life I recite the, the ayah from Surah Al-Baqarah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says indeed Allah does not shy or feel embarrassed about giving a simile of a creature as small as a mosquito or fama fawqaha مثل ما بودة فما فوقها يعني even is smaller than that in the phrasal word that but just recently the microscopic invention have discovered that this ayah could also be taken in that direction that they have discovered on the wing of the mosquito which is a very small creature there is a bacteria which lives on it so maybe that was a anatomical description of the scientific discovery but Allah knows best so those who have iman when they get a message from Allah they say this is the truth from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا And those who do the kufr from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَيَقُولُنَا مَاذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِهَذَا مَثَلًا The kuffar always come up with the question What does Allah mean by giving this example or similes? So in other words, the example given by Allah in the Quran whether big or small or minor or major The fact is, this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a believer take it as a sign and command of Allah and accept it سَمِعَنَا وَعَتَانَا the one who is not believer does not take it as such. So today's topic is about haya. In Allah, la yastai. Allah does not take haya or take shyness or or a shamefulness from any example what He gives because He is Allah. Everything is for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So the topic I chose today for the haya is modesty, or we can say the shyness. It has kind of very broad meaning and. In deen, in any religion, there is a way of life. And in the deen, in the Allah, in Islam, the way of life with Allah is Islam. So when the Allah's way is Islam, and Allah command how to live according to the sunnah of Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam. For us, the message is that when you have a way of life, way of life means a complete from birth to death, from dawn to dusk, from childhood and infancy to the death and after death and hereafter and in the akhirah. So this is a comprehensive way of life. If somebody have an incomplete way of life, then they should seek outside to find a benefit or advantage or superiority in a way of life. But if we have been given a comprehensive way of life, there is no need to go out and look for any other way of life or any other uh, celebrations or events. In February, we know that the topic is because of the month where majority of the people in Western world, particularly in our country, in the United States of America today, there is a celebration in the month of February which is known as Hall uh, Valentine's Day. So this is in this reference that how the haya and modesty plays in it. As we know, the, there are many versions of Valentine Day, even the today is past that two week or 14th was the day when they celebrated. Uh, this has taken a turn towards not to the goodness of the humanity, taken to, to the, against any faith, not just Islam, any faith. This celebration or this thing is basically have become a commercialized thing in which a, a man offers his girlfriend or his person of interest to have some un-Islamic, illegal, or unreligious relation. He offers them gifts or flowers or 
cards or take them out for the dinner. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like this lifestyle. Otherwise, he would not, not given us the way of life, what we live with. So in Surah Al-A'raf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing, قُلْ إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَا رَبِّ الْفَوَاحِشَ مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطْنَا وَالْإِثْمُ وَالْبَغَى بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ وَأَنْ تُشْرِكُوا بِاللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يُنَزِّلْ بِهِ سُلْطَانًا وَأَنْ تَقُولُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُ in Surah Al-Araf, which is chapter 7, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Say, O beloved Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Indeed, Allah, your Lord, have made forbidden the fawahish. Fawahish from obscenity and vulgarity to the illegal, anything which is of the human social behavior and relationship. Fawahish, we know in Urdu and Arabic is same, fahish, but in other, more explicit way is also the fornication or sexual, illegal, un-Islamic, extramarital sexual relation. Ma dhahra minha wa ma batna, which is ob obvious or manifest or secretly done. Wal ithma wal bagha, and the sinful and rebellious way of life, baghair al haq without the truth about it. Allah is haq and Muhammad Rasulullah is haq and Allah have sent Rasulullah with the haq. Wan tashriku billahi ma'alam yunazil bihi sultana. First thing is that do not make partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for which there is no authority and permission. وَأَن تَقُولُ عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And say things about Allah which you do not have knowledge of. مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Do not say things about Allah which you have no knowledge of. And then in Surah Al-An'am, I'm just quoting the Quranic verses where we are being commanded. We need to understand, لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ وَلَيَّدِينُ To you is your way of life, for us is our way of life. If we adopt their way of life, then we do not have our way of life. Then it is their way of life. But if we teach them our way of life, then they will think about our way of life. So when they refuse it, there is no compulsion. لَا إِكْرَحَ فِي الدِّينِ قَدْ تَبَيَّنَّ الرُّجْدَ مِنَ الْغَيْءِ فَمَنْ يَكْفَرْ بِالتَّعْغُوتِ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ اِسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْعُرْبَةِ الْمُسْقَ الْأَنْفِسَامَ لَهَا وَاللَّهُ سَمِيُّنْ عَلِيمٌ اللَّهُ وَلِيُّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا يُخْرِجُهُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَوْلِيَاهُمُ التَّعْغُوتِ يُخْرِجُونَ مِنَ النُّورِ إِلَى الظُّلُمَاتِ أُولَئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ So there is no compulsion in faith. The truth and falsehood have been manifest and clearly described. They are being given two paths, this path or that path, the righteous path and unrighteous path. These are very explicit description. And it is not that whatever humanity is doing today is anything new, creative or innovative. In time of Islam, when Nabi Wasallam was born, people used to make tawaf of Kaaba completely naked and would may write the poetry that uh, whoever wants to see can see what they want to see and we do not care for what, some kind of those verses were there so people were so vulgar and obscene and they were so much into fornication that nobody could trust who is the father of which child it was not unknown lewdness was being part of the human culture for several time and several years and several it's cultures and generations and being part of the religious activities in many places. So Islam is the one which has a clear path. If you want to live by it, it's up to you. If you want to not live by it, it's up to you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in Surah Al-Anam, قُلْ تَعَلَوْا أُطْلُوا مَا حَرَّمَ رَبَّكُمْ عَلَيْكُمْ Say, O beloved messenger, come, I will tell you what your Lord have forbidden upon you. أَلَّا تُشْرِكُ بِهِ شَيْنُ do not make partners with Allah in worship. And treat your parents with the most, utmost, beautiful, respectful way. Do not kill your children out of poverty and fear of poverty or sustenance. We give them and you the sustenance. I am the one who is provider, you are not the provider. And do not go near, do not go near, not even doing it, near of the obscenity, vulgarity, and nudity, and nudity, or the fornication, or the, or the zina, which is the illegal, un-Islamic sexual intercourse between men and women, zahara minha, which is manifest, wala batna, or secretly. وَلَا تَقْتَلُوا النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ And do not take the life of that one soul unless it is being justified except 
by the command of Allah, حرم. is a forbidden to take the life of anybody. This is the wasiya, this is the advice Allah has given to you so that you may get intellect, aql, so that you may use your aql. Then further Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Najm says there's a hope for those who committed sins. So Islam is not a religion of hopelessness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says الَّذِينَ يَجْتَنِبُونَ الْكَبَائِرَ مِنَ الْإِثْمِ وَالْفَبَاحِشَ إِلَّا لَمَمْ إِنَّ رَبَّكَ وَأَسِئُ الْمَغْفِرَةً هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِكُمْ إِذْ أَنْشَأَكُمْ مِنَ الْأَرْضِ وَأَنْتُمْ أَجِنَّةٌ فِي بُطُونِ أُمَّهَاتِكُمْ فَلَا تَذَكُّوا so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who have abstained from major sin, who have abstained, held themselves from committing major sin, in the obscenity, vulgarity, and lewdness, except they were compelled and forced into it. Indeed, your Lord mercy and forgiveness is widespread. And he knows about you. While you are walking and spreading out on the earth, and when you were infant or fetus in the womb of your mother and do not show that you are the most pious of all he is he's aware of who is most righteous and who is not so for us to understand that islam is a faith is a way of life in which people make mistake and people will make mistake there is a room for correction and tawbah tawbah al nasu is commanded by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala similar wording allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says again Surah Ash-Shura, which is chapter number 42. And in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ يَجْتَنِبُونَ كَبَائِرَ الْإِسْمِ وَالْفَوَاحِشَ وَإِذَا مَا غَضَبُوا هُمْ يَغْفِرُونَ there's another message coming here in the similar context, but a new situation described in the Quran. Those who abstain from committing major sins, we know the major sins, shirk billah, zana. There is no bigger punishment than the punishment of zana in Islam. It's stoning a person to death. There cannot be any harsher punishment. Islam says, do not even go near such vulgarity, obscenity. And if somebody has committed a major sin, so when you have been violated by anybody, when you are in anger, who are those? And there are the people who are also, when they become angered towards somebody, they forgive them for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anger is something very difficult to forgive and forget. And now the science and the studies are showing most of the uh, disorders of illnesses are because people are angered towards somebody who did something wrong to them. Somebody violates you, you know, that cannot be forgiven. Especially when you have expectation from someone or some individual or some matter. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us this message all along and Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam is giving us hope all along. Islam is a religion with the hope and the message. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, as I recited earlier, that Allah does not shy from making an example of anything. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further reminds, Ya ayyuhal insan, ma gharraka bi rabbika al kareem. O mankind, what made you to be so arrogant towards your Lord? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not love to punish us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to have mercy upon us and has given us the system and way of life which we need to follow. As about the topic of modesty and haya, and there are many hadiths, and I have chosen some of the hadiths to share with you. Uh, Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam says, Al-Imanu bi du'atun wa satun aw sab'un baban, adnaha imatuhul adha an tariq. ورفعها قول قول لا إله إلا الله والحياء والشعبة من الإيمان. which means نبي الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said that إيمان have sixty to seventy grades or faculties. among them the highest or the lowest is to remove a a a obstruction or or some thorn from the path of the people. that is a one of the faculty of إيمان. that is a reflection of إيمان. That you remove a hardship from somebody of the lowest level as in the path. People can be stuck with a thorn and get sick. And on, again, in medical science, we know that if you got stuck with a metal, like a nail stuck in your body, that can cause an infection, which is tetanus, which is very dangerous. It can cause cellulitis and infection. Poison goes into the body. People sometimes have to sever their body or take out the toe or limb because of that thing become infected in what's called gangrene, the dead tissue. So, so, so 
Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is so describing that if you remove the obstruction somebody's path, that is the Iman thing. And the highest level of Iman is saying La ilaha illallah, none is worthy of worship except Allah. And Haya, the modesty or shyness is one of the faculty of Iman. Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, sahaba says about him, Kana Nabi sallallahu alayhi salam, ashadda hayaun min adharai fil khidriha, which means he was more shy than a unmarried young female would be. Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, there's a hadith which is a little long in which Nabi alayhi salatu was salam says, do sharm or haya with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which means, that, that, that one should one be shy should be and, and modest with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way he deserved to be with. So Sahaba says, Ya Rasulullah, we do have haya and shyness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in which also we do the thing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nabi sallallahu replied that rightness or righteousness of the haq of the haya is Whatever is from your head to toe, you should protect it from not violating the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You should actively guard from your head to toe every organ of your body from the obscenity and vulgarity and disobedience to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he said, whatever is in your abdomen and whatever organs are within there, protect them also. And, and remember, remember the death, death and, the and the turning of turning dust, of, dust the of the bones. And whoever, and whoever have the love, the love to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and the glory and the, and the rewards of the hereafter, hereafter, hereafter that, person that person should, should, should do the haya with, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the, the way he deserved to have it. In this message, there is a reflection that we should remember our death and our body to be turned into dust. As we know, we decorate our body, we dress and we have to do things. But we should not do overbearing so that we may lose our own identity in that manner. Many times people try to do things which are not better for them. And they spend a lot of money on those things or their wealth wasting israf. Israf should is not accepted in Islam. And, and, and <coughs> Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, another hadith which he says, whichever thing have haya in it and whichever has obscenity in it. He talked about these two matters. He said when things have obscenity and vulgarity and there is no haya in that thing, that become defected, ayyub. That thing become with the ayyub. And I don't want to go into details. When we expose ourselves, when we watch other things, when we see obscenity and vulgarity, when we hear or we talk or act in those manners, that become a part of our personality. It affects us. Example the scholars give that when you watch something totally unacceptable in Islamic manners, like a vulgarity or nudity or language of obscenity, First it First touches, it touches. I thought, oh, that's not my way. But if you keep repeating that, then the haya goes away from that. And then it becomes part of life. And a person says, why people are so upset about it? So some of the people in the khutbah listening to this lecture will say, what's the matter? We are all dressed up properly, modestly. But it's not that, it's not the reminder. فَذَكْرَ إِنَّ ذِكْرَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ So remind and remember. So when things of newness or new things of obscenity and vulgarity will come, shaitan will not leave only one path to come and go. He comes from every word path possible. From our own self, from right, left, up and down, everywhere except the up is protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He attacks us on every direction. Yet, if it is not us, then he attacks us from our loved ones, the family. He attacks us from friends, the social life. He attacks us from our needs. So he attacks us in many different ways. And we start to try to talk to ourselves that, well, let go. It's okay. They are children. Things are taught in childhood. If our, we, those who are in our age, who grew up in our Islamic culture and parents and family, whether Muslim or non-Muslim family, or culture, 
Muslim who grew up in Indian subcontinent who was in majority non-Muslim country. But the Muslims have their own culture and their identity and it could be recognized from the distance. This is a Muslim. So everywhere Muslim lives were there. But today they are trying to merge the culture. And this is where we need to be careful that we have to preserve our religious identity. It's not just for the woman to wear hijab. Men also have to act modestly. And our eyes and our gaze and our eyes and ears should be modest too. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran commanded men to keep your gaze down first before he commanded women. Because science has proven men think about lust every 45 minutes. This is the nature of the creature. He has no control over this desire. That he has to think about it. And when he sees somebody, they did a study actually in England. And there was a British journal, uh, Lancet, they did, uh, published a report. They put a young man on the library in medical on the college. Librarian, they assigned him and they were doing a study of how the human responses to seeing the opposite gender. And what they did is they signed him to sign the book. No talk, nothing. And they sent a man to sign up the book from the library. And they took his saliva. They test the saliva from the mouth for the blood testosterone. Testosterone is a male hormone, which floods up when men get excited, aroused. So what they did is they took the saliva of this man. When the men came to sign up, it did not happen anything to his saliva. It remained low. The testosterone was low. Then they sent a girl who was properly dressed, did not speak, did not talk. She just came to sign the book. And then they took the saliva test for the testosterone. It shot up. This is why the science proved that the gaze of the man affect the body. We hear, we affect. Good word make us feel happy. Music and song we hear and we start rocking and moving. Words matter, gaze matters, scenery matters. What we tell, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when you're angry, change the scenery. If you're sitting, stand up. Standing, start walking. Go to the other person, talk to other person. Change the mood. What you cannot do anything, go make a wudu. Scene changes, the emotion changes. So we need to be careful, and this is the God. Yusuf Alayhi Salam was the Nabi Allah, Rasulullah, son of four prophets, himself being a prophet, most beautiful and handsome man, tempted by Zulaikh. Quran describes very explicitly what will happen. And then Quran says, if he had not been shown a sign, if he had not been shown a sign, there was a chance he would have slept. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said, I cannot say about myself that I would have saved myself what happened to Yusuf alayhi salam. Prophet of Allah, the most strongest man saying, so temptations are there. Everybody get temptation. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to protect us. So Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam says, when there is a haya in anything, it has all blessings in it. When there is no haya in things, the obscenity prevails and it just takes over upon us. And we need to be very mindful about that. And then another hadith, Nabi said, Inna mimma adraka nasu min kalam al nabuwati, idha lam tastahi fasna'u mashir. The thing which are being collected from the information about the Prophet is that when you do not have a haya, you do not have a shyness and modesty, then you can do anything what you want. As Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam in other hadiths, فَإِن لَمْ تَسْتَحِي فَفَ الْمَعْشِرِ When you do not have a shy and respect and modesty, honor about yourself, if you don't have a haya, then do whatever you want. And this is what happens, it takes upon us in such a way that we have to be careful. Another hadith Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam says, حِلْم in haya and satr, the cover of the body to the point, is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He loves Allah, uh, this a person who does that. And he was walking by a place and he saw a Muslim, a Sahabi, who was taking a bath openly, publicly. But he did not cover himself. He just undressed himself. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi came to the Masjid the Nabawi. He stood up on the member and said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the haya and hilm, which is forbearing. Forbearing and modesty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and he loves to cover the men from the navel to the knee. Women from head to the toe except face and hand and feet she can show. This is God and his prophets given dress code. We didn't make it. That is the dress code which Allah has given to us. If you do not want to wear it, Allah does not care. Allah does not need to be shy. We know what is inside and what is our mind thinking, what is in our heart thinking. 
So modesty is for the showing. So people say, oh, such and such person was wearing beard and was wearing imama and does the salah. And the woman was wearing hijab and she pretended to be religious. Yet she was fine doing, found doing something un-Islamic. It does not 100% guarantee that a person will not commit sin. But the believer is when they do mistake. When a person of Iman, when he commit a obscenity and vulgarity and sinful act, they do not become stubborn about their action and disobedience. They come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek the forgiveness and who can forgive the sin except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should be mindful of this thing that our message from Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam is that we should be modest. Usman ibn Affan radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was so much modest and shy that even in his home when he would take shower, because in those uh, times there were no bathrooms. The homes were closed door and then people take bath in the room. There were no toilets. People used to go to toilets out of the city. So this is something we understood in the context of the time. Osman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, even with the door closed, used to take a bath with the cloth covering their aura. Nabi sallallahu said, even angels shy from him. Once Rasulullah sallallahu was sitting with his uh, other sahaba, Osman, Abu Bakr and uh, Umar and other sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala alayhim ajma'in, and another sahabi said, Osman is coming. The Prophet's tie was exposed. And he sat appropriately and covered his thigh. So I said, Ya Rasulullah, what happened? He said, Usman is a shy man. Even angels shy from him. I better be dressed properly into this. So this is how Nabi Ali Salatu Wasalam respected and showed and taught modesty to the people. And another hadith Nabi Ali Salatu Wasalam said, which is very interesting for us to know. He said, when Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala want to kill a person, إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ إِذَا أَرَادَ أَنْ يَحْلِكَ الْعَبْدِ يَحْلِكَ عَبْدًا When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intend to kill a person, the first thing he takes from him is sharam and haya. He takes away from his modesty and shrine and modesty. And then when the haya goes away, then he is become trapped into the qahar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now you could see this is how stage-wise it is described. And when in this condition his heart he takes away from his heart a man, the trustworthy. And when that thing is taken from his heart, the trustworthy, then he starts stealing and he starts be becoming khain, khayan. He starts becoming liar and untrustworthy and thief. And when he starts doing all that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take away from his heart the mercy. Now we see those who are criminals, they have no mercy. The rapists, the murderers, the thieves, the robbers. When they commit a sin, mercy is not in their heart. When they kill children, when they commit a crime against humanity. As we know what is going on in Kashmir today, the civilians of Kashmir are subjected to. Or our brothers and sisters in Palestine, for 70 years they have been living through that punishment. Or uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he said, you will find him mal'oon and mardu. Mal'oon means outcast. And you will find him that free from the wadda, the love. He will be loveless person. If you don't find a love in a person, that person is distant from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then you will see that the Islam, the rope or the, 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 the honor of Islam is taken away from this person. So we should be observant. Another hadith Nabi alayhi salatu was salam said, inna li kulli deenin khulqin wa khulq al-islam al-haya. This is another thing. Every faith have a etiquette, khulq. The etiquette of Islam is shyness, modesty. 
So we are supposed to be modest. And there was a time when Nabi Wasallam was walking by a Ansar and he found that he was harshly talking to his brother and telling him that you are shy and you are embarrassing and you become modest about things which are not so important. Nabi Wasallam tell to this brother who was yelling at his brother that modesty is a part of if Iman. So leave him be the way he is, means being modest, we should not, you know, talk people off and say, oh, this person is very shy, as if a defect of character. Actually, it is the character. Shyness is a character, not the, ca in, you know how we know? Innocent things. Children are innocent. They don't know much sin and not. But if you touch them inappropriately in an inappropriate place, they don't like it. They come and tell the parents that I've been touched by such and such person. Unless we take the shyness away from them, they all have modesty. We are all sitting here, right? No matter which country we are from. If we undress one of us here publicly, what is going to happen? Devastating the person. This is what is the modesty and shyness. This is ingrained character of a human that we want to be dressed. But some people want to be undressed. So may Allah give them the hidayah and make dua for them. And another hadith Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Hayah is from Iman. And Iman, the return of Iman is the Jannah. And Fahash, the foul language, Fahash Goy, obscenity in the language, and Zul, and excesses in the Zul, is from the Jafa. And that, the return of it is the Hellfire. So we have been and repeatedly been reminded by Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, be forbearing and be modest. So just do not follow anything if people are celebrating Halloween or people are celebrating Valentine's Day and they think this is something, just a cultural thing. We have enough in our religion and culture to celebrate, to respect and honor. A young man came to Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam and he asked him, and this is a hadith, he said, Ya Rasulullah, I need a permission to commit zina. Zina is a fornication, illegal sexual intercourse. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam did not get angry with him. He did not shun him down. He looked at the wisdom how he approached this young man. He said, sit down. Let's talk. He said, would you like that somebody should do this to your mother? To your sister, to your daughter. He said, no. He said, then why would you want to do this to somebody's daughter and mother? And mother? See, he understood. If he would have said, shut up and get out and this and that. When person is in sin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is close to the sinner. You should know also. We should know that. Why? We see in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Musa alayhi salam, izhab ila farawna in huttara. Go to the Pharaoh. He is in the rebellion. What did Pharaoh did? He claimed to be God. Rest of it was good. He claimed to be God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Prophet, go and talk to him nicely. He might understand the talk. So when you deal with the sinner, we need to be modest. We need to be kind. We need to be full of wisdom. We should be with the hikmah. Often with the young children and our own children, we are very harsh. With the loved ones, with the family, we are very harsh. And that lead them to the other direction. Where the other person is telling them, oh, no, you are so beautiful. Why would somebody want to not you do this thing? You are free to do, enjoy your life. It's your body and it's your life. It's our body, but the life is like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should be obedient to samiyana wa ta'ala. We are not samiyana wa asayna. We did not hear and disobey. We heard and we obey. So for us, there's a message all along in this. And being a human is not easy. This, this humanness this, this, this is not easy. Not easy. The example is from one of the hadiths of Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam. Harut and Maru, there were two angels, Surah Baqarah talks about them. They were sent on the earth because this is referenced in the, uh, in the ayah tafsir that is called Rabbul al Malaikati inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. قَالُوا وَتَاجَلُوا فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُوا فِيهَا وَيَسْسِقُوا الدِّمَاءَ وَنَحْنُ نُسَبِّعُ بِحَمْدِكَ وَنَقْدَ سُلَقْ قَالَ إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُ When Allah told the angels, your Lord told the angels of Muhammad, when he said, I'm going to appoint a human as a vice general, a caretaker of the earth, they said, why would you create a creature who will call bloodshed and mischief 
and so on and so forth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, according to the hadith, this is narrated, sent two angels, Harut and Marut. Ma unzila ala al-malakain bi babila Harut and Marut. This is in Surah Baqarah, as you've mentioned. Two angels, their name was Harut and Marut. When they were sent down, the hadith narrates further, they were presented with a very beautiful woman. When they were presented with a woman, and they wanted to have an Islamic way of illegal sexual relation with her. So she said, by Allah, I'm not going to do this till you deny Allah. They said, we cannot deny Allah. No matter what, we cannot deny Allah. So she went back. Then she came back. She said, I will commit this illegal sexual relation with you if you kill this baby. She brought a beautiful baby child with her. She said, we cannot do the murder. No way. We are not going to do it. Then she went and came third time and brought alcoholic beverage with her. And then they said, okay, this we can do. It was very simple to drink an alcohol, not killing a baby and denying Allah. When they drank the alcohol, they become intoxicated. They committed the zina, denied Allah and did the murder also. So this is why Rabbi Salaam says, Khumr, Ummul Khaba'is. Drugs and alcohol and these things are the mother of evil. One step leads to the second and third and everything when happened, it removes the inhibition. There's a whole lecture which I have talked before about alcohol and its effect. So as a Muslim, it is for us, Do not go near zina. Not doing the zina, do not even go near zina. Quran teaches us, do not go near zina. And when we offer these cards and this thing to the Valentine Day, we are luring the women and they, you know, women have a nature. If you talk to them nice, they start smiling. And Allah has made temptation and made them beautiful looking. It's his nature. We see our daughters, our spouses and our parents and we see other children. Say what a beautiful baby and a girl you are or a woman. Same thing they feel for the man. So when you put two plus two, when Nabi Sallallahu said, when two are alone, the third man among them is shaitan. And then he put the waswasa in their heart. And one thing leads to the other. So do not even go near such things. The Valentine Day is not an Islamic celebration. It has nothing to do with any Muslim culture or even Christian culture. Or if it's any Jewish culture. So none of the people of Book of Faith celebrates it. Even Hindu of India have denied to celebrate Valentine. Why would Muslim countries are so hell-bent to celebrate it? Teach ourselves and make the message along. This is not our thing. We don't need to shout and fight. We just say this is not part of our culture or faith or beliefs. It just brings me more nude. So we should abstain from it. If I said anything wrong, may Allah forgive me. If I said anything right, may Allah accept from us.